She has 15 studio albums under her belt. Add to that a TV show, a podcast. She's been inducted into the Canadian Music Hall of Fame. She's an advocate for animals. She has just published her fourth book. Any guesses of who I'm talking about? Of course. You saw her fingers, maybe. She was counting me in. <laughs> that is Jan Arden. You are correct. Hi. So great to be here. I, this is so exciting. The Bill here Morris. I am selling something else again. Yeah, but look, this is so exciting because it this is. is your first novel. Mm -hmm. This is your first novel. It's a story that you've been carrying with you for what, 14 years, 13 or 14 I years? I literally started this a, uh, well over a decade and a half ago. I started in a little uh, sort of an Airbnb place in Nashville. Yeah. And I thought, oh, I, this would be kind of fun to attempt this because I had a story in my mind. Yeah. And then just the years rolled on, I wrote Feeding My Mother and If I Knew Then in between. And then mm -hmm. it became a running joke with the office. Are you going to get that book done, Bruce Allen? I'm like, I'm going to do it this summer. He go Everyone just rolled their eyes at me. So I finally finished it a couple of years ago. but A couple of, of course, years ago? Yes, but then there's the editing. So yeah. uh, I worked with wonderful Ann Collins from uh, Random House. And, and here we are. It, it really has been... So much fun, and it's always hard saying goodbye to people that you yeah. literally... Well, for a long time. Yeah, this yeah. is a long time. So let's start with the with the story. I mean, tell us about who the Bittlemores are. Great name, by the way. The I almost want to be like, Bittlemores. Yeah, they're horrible, horrible people. <laughs> they are. Uh, they have a farm in a place called the Back Hills. I never really specified where Back Hills was or really what year it was, although it predates cell phones and computers because I felt like I can't have that to make this story believable. So I'm going to say like the late 60s, 70s. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they're just, they're just horrible, horrible people. They have uh, a couple of daughters mm -hmm. and they have farm animals that they're horrible with. And um, it's, it really is a, a, a rural fairy tale. That's what this book is. A rural fairy yeah. tale. Can I ask you about the animals? Because th they're very smart. There's talking cows. That, yeah, they can talk to each other. And the, the cats talk. And you know, you have to have a little bit of whimsy in your heart yeah. to kind of go along with that. But I'm telling you, you will forget that they're animals, you know, after the second chapter yeah. because you start having empathy for them mm -hmm. and you start seeing them as living, thinking, feeling beings. And that, that was important to me as well. Mm -hmm. I think when people can shift um, that whole idea of how they perceive you know, animal husbandry, it does change the game how you make your way through the world. Mm -hmm. You know, you love your dog, but you don't love the cow or the pig or the goat or the... So that was important to me to give them human qualities that make it completely impossible to not love them. They're really great. Really great and characters I want, in this. I, you know, I don't want the bad guys to win. And in, in th this book is satisfying on every mm -hmm. level because I, I don't think I let people down as far as the outcome. Can I ask you though, so you've been working on this for 13 or 14 years. <laughs> I so, know. so you're working a little bit, chipping away at it along the way. Yeah. How do you know when you're done then? You don't. You don't. I, my friend Nigel Stoneman, who works for Simon & Schuster, my, my dear friend, he's in London. Get the bloody thing in. <laughs> bloody send the bloody book. I don't want to hear about this bloody book again. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Now you're making me mad. Right. So I sent it in. And of course, I was probably done way sooner than I thought I was because my editor, Anne, she's like, uh, we're going to probably lose 30 or 40,000 words. Oh my gosh, really? And I'm like, wow, there was that much extra. And she goes, <laughs> yes. Oh. You know, she said, you know, you had side stories to your side stories to this side story. So as a first time novelist, mm -hmm. you know, having written the memoir type stuff, right. I think I kept getting lost in these offshoots. I mean, I sat at it for far too long. I learned a lot and I didn't know what I was doing. And my own mother said, Jan, you do not have to be a great writer to tell a great story. Oh, I like that a lot. And, and it's the truth. No, I'm not um, John Steinbeck. <laughs> you probably thought I was. <laughs> but I, I, just, I it, just speak in my own... Which is why we love yeah. you so much. I, I heard something about you. You've got to tell me if this is true. Uh oh Did you, Do you go in and buy a copy of your book? I went yesterday yeah. when it came out. Yeah. I went to Eaton Center. Yeah. And I waltzed in and I bought the book and I leave the receipt. And I do it with every record. I do it with so every was, book. Uh, yeah. It's kind of a good luck charm. And uh, anyway, the Indigo folks had me sign like a uh, hundred books while I was there. Really? Yeah, she just looked at me very strangely. She goes, you look high. You're probably wondering why I'm buying my own book. 
Aww. And uh, but they were cool. They just she said, "Do you mind signing a couple?" And then a guy came down with a gurney and a whole bunch of boxes. So <laughs> if you go to Eaton Center, yeah. you can get a signed copy. Can I get a signed copy? Yeah, you can. Do you think if I grab a pen, will you sign my? Copy? Oh, I will. I'd love to sign that. Thanks, Jan. But you, thank you for thank you for having me on. Uh, it's, my pen. It really is a, a great story. Yeah. And it's an adventure. Congratulations. Thank you. I mean, that's very a much. long time to work on something. So it must feel really great to have it. Look at me, I'm like inching towards you. Now you now you're signing 101 to Lindsay. Dear Lindsay. Dearest Lindsay. <laughs> Jan, thank if you so it, much. Congratulations. You'll probably want to edit out 20,000 of these works. <laughs> no, thanks a lot. No, and, great and, job. And here it is. Yep. Don't just pick it up and you might get a signed copy that I did at Eaton Center. Ooh, so go now. Love that little nugget. A reminder, the book is called The Biddlemores. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.